the sliding window algorithm and the two pointer approach these are two main concepts which come in very handy when you are solving problems on arrays right so how about a scenario when you have to combine both of these concepts together to arrive at an efficient solution this is all what this problem is all about so let's see how we can tackle it hello friends welcome back to my channel first i will explain the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases going forward we will start off with a brute force approach and see why that is not feasible after that we are gonna combine both the two pointer approach and the sliding window algorithm to come at an efficient solution and then obviously we will also do a dry run so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action without further ado let's get started first of all let's make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly in this problem you are given an array of positive integers and some target value what you have to do is you just have to tell me the smallest length of a sub array such that the sum of all the elements is greater than or equal to the target so for example i have this particular test case with me now the target value is 7 this sum 7 can be formed in multiple ways for example if you add all of these elements then you get a total of 8 correct and that is greater than 7 so this is one sub array and its length is 4 correct similarly if you add all of these elements then once again you get a sum of 10 and the length is 4 again but if you notice closely the smallest array that is possible is 4,3 that is just two elements and if you add them it is 7 so for this particular test case 2 is your answer because 2 is the length of this sub array right similarly if you look at the second test case this time i have three elements 1 4 and 4 and the target value is just 4 so what is the minimum length of the sub array if you notice if you pick just one element then you are able to reach the target value so for this particular test case one is your answer because you only need one element similarly we have one more edge case as well for example i have this particular array i have all these ones and they are repeated eight times the target value however is 11 so is there a way by which you can add all of these values and get 11 no right so for such a scenario when a sub array is not even possible then you have to return zero as your answer so this is the basic crux of the problem you have to identify a sub array within an array such that the sum of its elements is greater than or equal to the target If you now feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. To come up with a solution, you need to begin somewhere, right? So, let us say I have the sample test case in front of me and the target value is 7. What you need to do is find out the length of the minimum sub array, correct? So, the brute force approach that straight away comes to your mind is, okay, I can start off with the minimum windows possible. so the minimum window is 1 correct such that you will find 7 or an element greater than 7 in the array itself so what you will do is you will look up all of the elements with the window size of 1 correct so you scan through the entire array and try to find out the target sum you do not find when the length is 1 so what you do next the next approach will be that okay you take a length of 2 then This is your first window. So the sum is 5. This is smaller than target, so you can move ahead. The next window is 3,1. So that is 4. This is still less than target, so you can move ahead. Now this is the next window, then this is the next window, and then this is the next window. So by this approach, yes, you were able to arrive at your answer. You found out that okay, with the minimum length of 2, the sum is 7. So a brute force approach works yes it will give you a correct answer every time but it ends up taking so much time think about it right now you were able to find out the answer with a minimum window size of just two elements it could be possible that the window size is of 4 and the array is very large then you will have to keep on looking first windows of 3 then windows of 4 and this will go on for your entire array right so 
naturally this will end up taking a lot more time that's why we need to think about an efficient approach to start thinking about an efficient approach we must first focus on what all did we have so we had a window size correct in our brute force approach we tried a window size of 1 2 3 and then so on so this is telling you that it is a sliding window correct but usually a sliding window has a constant length you just take up this size of window and then you scan it through the array but this time the size of your window is also changing so this problem is a variable size sliding window problem so what basically happens is you need to dynamically change the size of your window as you are traversing the array so what do we do over here let us just start solving it i have my sample array once again and this is the target value correct so let me just start and i will start off my window currently i just have one element in my window right and i can say that okay my current sum is two we need to find out the minimum window possible such that the target is seven correct so i also have a variable min window size and right now let us assume that this size is infinity that this is a very huge window and i haven't found out anything yet moving ahead what do i do i take up the second element also when i take up the second element the current sum changes to five five is still less than the target right so we don't have to do anything let us take up one more element i take up the element one the sum now changes to six six is still less than seven that means i still haven't found out my sub array let us keep expanding our window i add the next element two again so now the current sum changes to eight if you notice eight is greater than seven that means this particular window it has satisfied our criteria it means the sum of this sub array is greater than target so we need to preserve this information somewhere right currently i was expecting that hey i did not even find a window it was infinite but i found that okay i have a window of size 4 available this is giving me an answer so since i found out a smaller window i will update this value and the value of my minimum window changes to 4 now before moving ahead i just want you to focus on one scenario let us say instead of 2 the element over here was 6 then what would happen the value of current sum would have been 12 right so it is not necessary that this is your minimum window the value of the current sum is much greater than the target it means that i can likely remove some elements from the beginning itself right so if you notice i can safely get rid of this particular 2 and then what does my sum become my sum becomes 10 it is still greater than the target value it simply means that i can get rid of one more element and now what is my sum now my sum becomes 7 so this simply means that when you are iterating through the array as you are expanding the window you also have to shorten your window dynamically such that you are trying to find out the minimum window possible so going back to our original scenario we were over here right this element was 2 now before moving ahead what we will do is we will try to remove elements from our current window so i will remove first element as soon as i remove 2 what does my sum become my sum changes to 6 and 6 is smaller than the target so this window is not feasible that means what do i need to do i need to include one more element as soon as i include this element my sum once again changes to 10 and 10 is greater than 7 right it means i have found out one more window and this window also has a length of 4 and my minimum length is already 4 so i don't need to update it at the same time you need to check can i remove any elements from this window so we will try to remove the first element as soon as i remove 3 the current sum becomes 7 and this gives us a very good information the current sum is 7 and the target is 7 that means just with a window size of 3 i can achieve my result so this window size is 3 and the minimum window i had up till now was 4 
3 is less than 4. So what we are going to do is we will update this value. You need to be aggressive. So you need to check, hey, can I remove one more element? As soon as you remove one more element, this sum now changes to 6. So this particular window is not feasible for us. But think about it. If this element would have been a 0, then you could have achieved a smaller window size, right? But however, what we will now do is we will keep on moving ahead and I include my next element. As soon as I do it, the sum now changes to 9. This gives me one more possibility. I have one more window where the current sum is greater than the target. So this window is valid, yes, but its length is 3. And we have already recorded one window where the length was 3. So no need to update it. But at the same time, be aggressive and try to remove an element. If I remove an element, the current sum changes to 7. And what just happened? The current sum is 7 and the target is 7. That means I have a valid window and its length is 2. And notice, 2 is less than 3. That means I need to update the value of my minimum window. So far so good, you have been traversing the array and you are constantly updating the value of your minimum window length. But we are still not done yet. We need to be aggressive once again and try to remove more elements from the left. As soon as I remove this element, the sum now changes to 3. This sum is less than the target, so we don't have to do anything about it. And since there are no more elements available, you can just stop over here. You have traversed the entire array and you found out that the minimum window where the sum of the subarray is greater than the target is 2. And hence, this is your answer. Notice that we are only doing one iteration of the array. So the time complexity of this solution turns out to be order of n. And we are not taking any extra space to arrive at a result. That is why the space complexity of this solution will be order of 1. And think about it, it cannot get better than this. You definitely have to scan all of the elements in the array to determine that hey, this is my minimum subarray. Now, based upon this idea, let us quickly do a dry run of the code. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have my sample array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function min sub array length. Now, beginning off with the dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create our two variables where min length window is the minimum length that we can find and I have the current sum. So the current sum is 0 and min length window is right now positive infinity. That means my window size is very huge. Going ahead, if you remember, I told that this problem combines the two pointer approach and the sliding window. So to have a variable sized sliding window, we take the help of two pointers. We have a low pointer and a high pointer. So right now, both the low pointers and the high pointer will point at the very first element. And what I will then do is, I will run a while loop until my high pointer reaches all the way up to the end. At every iteration, what do you do? You add up the current number to the current sum. So what will happen is, 2 gets added to the current sum and the current sum now changes to 2. With this, now you can move your high pointer one step ahead. If this current sum is less than the target value, that means we haven't found out any window. So we will just need to continue our while loop. What will happen next is this 3 will get added to the current sum. So the current sum changes to 5 and the high pointer will move one step ahead again. Once again, the current sum is less than the target. So in the next iteration, I will add 1 to my current sum. The high pointer now reaches 2. Notice what happens in this iteration. 2 will get added to the current sum. So the current sum now becomes 8, right? And this time, this current sum is greater than the target. It means that I have found a potential window. So this is my window. And how do you find out this window? High minus low. This will give you the length of your current window. And in this particular loop, what do I do? I find out the current window size and then I will update the minimum length of the window. So the minimum length will be the minimum of this and whatever the current window is. So the current window has a size of 4. This value is positive infinity. The minimum out of these is 4. So the length of the current window gets updated to 4. 
you found out one particular window, right? This is the time to be aggressive and you will try to remove elements from the very left. This is where I do current sum minus whatever the number is at your low pointer. So 8 minus 2, that gives me a 6 and I will move my low pointer one step ahead. The target value is now greater than the current sum. That means I need to look for the next available window. This while loop will run again and this time I will try to add 4 to my current sum. Once again, the current sum will be greater than the target and then this will give you a new window size to work with. So this keeps on happening all the way up to the end and you will have the minimum length window updated over here. At the very end, this will turn out to be 2. To return the result, you just check if the value of min length window remains the same as the maximum value that was positive infinite. That means I wasn't able to find out any window that has the sum equal to target. In that case, you return a zero. Otherwise, you will return whatever length did you find. In this case, you found a two and that is what you return as the answer. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As for my final thoughts, I just want to say that when there are questions on a sliding window, then the window size is almost constant and you have to slide it. With a two pointer approach, this window size becomes variable and that adds too many dynamics to the problem as well. You can see that there can be so many different combinations possible from this same problem itself. What happens if there are negative numbers? What happens if there are zeros in between? What happens if you have to choose two different arrays? So these are all different variations and they can be asked up as a follow up question when you see this question in an interview. So while going throughout the video, did you face any problems or do you know any other method by which you can attack this problem? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get pride to reply to your comments as well. Stay tuned for my next videos. Until then, see ya.